Howdy, Tommy from Technicians here. And uh, as quarantine becomes more mainstream, I'm seeing a lot of people make these really bad mistakes that can cause your quarantine to fail, you to introduce disease into your display tank, overall have a real bad time and not really get the most value out of this investment that you're doing. So today I'm gonna show you how we maintain biosecurity here. So how we're making sure that we're not cross-contaminating, introducing a disease from one place to another, making sure that everything is sterile. Uh, this is critical to quarantine. I don't see enough of this on the forums. It's really easy to look up a treatment protocol and figure out how much copper or whatever medicine to add to the tank. But this is a lot less intuitive. So here we go. All right, so you have to assume that fish are sick because chances are all of them are. And we don't know what diseases they have. So when you put them through quarantine, you want to treat them for everything that they might have. And you need to make sure that you do an observation to make sure that you're not putting diseases from those fish into your display tank. This is all common knowledge. If you've been following the channel for a while, you've heard this over and over and over again. Fish are pets ultimately, and we should treat them as such. You know, oftentimes I think of this theoretical, hypothetical cat store. I know cat stores don't exist, but if they did, and you had cats at home, and you wanted to get a new cat, and you walked into the cat store, and you said, hey, I'd like to buy this cat, and they had just gotten it in, and it hadn't gotten its vaccines, and all these things that are commonplace when we take care of our mammalian pets, um, they just wouldn't sell it to you. And even if they did, they would advise you strongly about the risk of introducing diseases from that animal that hasn't been treated into the cats that you keep at home. When we compare this to the fish store, oftentimes it's fairly bleak. I mean, it's pretty standard practice for fish stores to sell the fish as quickly as they come in. I know many fish stores that'll sell fish straight out of the bag without any conditioning or treatments. They don't make sure that it's eating. And because of this, if you don't live in an area that has a quarantine shop, which chances are you don't, it's your responsibility to make sure that these animals are safe and healthy before they go into your display tank. Most fish stores would be happy to put a dory in a bio cube. And that's why I'm making this video because there's so much out there about quarantine. You can go on humblefish.com and read everything that you need. But biosecurity is critical and most people are missing that. Most of the diseases that we're treating are microscopic um, and they can literally be transported by tiny droplets of water moving through the air. And I'm not talking about like visible splash from a pump or something like that or from your, your sponge filter bubbling. I'm talking about aerosolized micro droplets of water. This is analogous to if you walk outside on a hot day after a rainstorm and the air feels heavy. Um, if you spray an aerosol can and that stuff moves throughout the air. That's what's happening with these diseases. They're so small, they can be transported on these microscopic droplets. And as such, it's critical that you're making sure that everything that touches the tank goes into the water, even your hands, is sterilized before entering the quarantine environment. All right, so I'm gonna show you how we address biosecurity here. Uh, we like to sterilize with either bleach or rubbing alcohol. And if I'm gonna clean the tanks, I make sure that I sterilize my hands first, and then I sterilize the surface that I'm going to be cleaning the tanks on. So in this case, I'm gonna use this cart. I'm gonna spray it down with rubbing alcohol, and I'm gonna grab a paper towel and I'm gonna wipe it down. All right, so next I'm gonna take some rubbing alcohol on a paper towel, and I'm gonna hit the outside of the aquarium, making sure that I touch all the surfaces. If the tank is dirty, if it has salt creep running down the side, I'm gonna to wanna to clean it with fresh water first. Make sure I've removed anything that could be hiding uh, anything from getting sterilized with the rubbing alcohol. All right, so now the outside of the tank is clean. The surface I'm gonna be sterilizing on is clean. I'm gonna take the tank, move it there. Now let's take a look at the tank. So the first step here is to make sure that we remove anything, uh, any physical particles, any petroleum jelly from the top of the lid, any biofilm that's accumulated, algae, uneaten fish food, fish poop, salt creep, any of that that's inside of here it has to go before you can sterilize. If you skip that step underneath the biofilm and underneath the salt creep, disease cysts can survive. Um, and so you want to make sure that you've removed all of that so that when you sterilize, you know it's clean. Oh, oh, oh boy, look at that, look at that, ugh, grody, isn't that gross, there's stuff in it. Here, here, oh, 
some of this. Now I'm going to pour some fresh water in there. Doesn't take a lot. And then use clean paper towels. Make sure you're swapping your paper towels out between each one. You want to get everything off the bottom. So you shouldn't have a ton built up. Shouldn't really require any intense scrubbing. But look at all that. That's all biofilm under which diseases can be hiding. You see right here, a lot of times at the water level. I don't know, is that pointing out? Yeah, you got gunk there. All of this has to be scrubbed off before you can start your sterilizing. The tank is almost squeaky clean. Now we're going to take some rubbing alcohol and just spray it on the inside. We're going to wipe it down with a paper towel all the same. Make sure that you get everywhere that comes in contact with water. So we're going to hit the top two. So you need to continue this process until the paper towel is totally clean. You can see there's a bunch of gunk on here still. Um, so I'm going to re-wet the tank with rubbing alcohol. I'm going to scrub it again. All right, so we're looking pretty clean now. Now we're gonna set up the quarantine tank. Everything that goes inside of the tank also has to be sterilized. Now with the PVCs, with our air filters, even our lids, we'll soak these in a bleach solution. So things that are, uh, are hard, like PVC, the lid, uh, those can go into a high concentration of bleach for a shorter period of time. We do 10 to 15 minute baths uh, in a bleach solution. Our sponges, those have to be bleached at a lower concentration, otherwise they'll literally melt, so don't make that mistake. Um, and you're gonna wanna soak those for about 24 hours. Make sure that you're squeezing the bleach solution into the sponge, because it takes a long time for water to travel through the sponge if the filter isn't actually working. Um, so you're gonna squeeze those really well, and then you have to make sure they dry out fully before you use them. So applying the petroleum jelly so that we can put our airtight lid onto the tanks is probably not something that you'll have to do so long as you can do your quarantine in a totally separate room in your house. You don't have to worry about cross-contamination from the tanks being so close to other aquariums. Uh, we don't have that luxury here as a commercial quarantine facility. We have to have our tanks close together and that's why we developed these lids. So this is to ensure that none of those micro droplets carrying diseases are able to get into the quarantine tank. The quarantine tank is all set up. You can see we have tanks sterilized, hides for the fish are sterilized. We got our sponge filters in the back which are also sterilized. Our lid itself is sterilized, although hopefully you have enough space that you don't have to worry about that particular facet of quarantine. Um, so all that's left is for us to take this tank, put it back up there, and what we prefer to do is to allow it to dry. So we'll put air on here so that there's positive pressure pushing into the tank and out through the filter column. And then we'll let it sit for a couple days before we actually set up the tank. This drying step is an extra sterilization step. That, so I know that at least some of you that are watching are probably thinking, oh, but there's medicine in the quarantine tank anyway. So what does this biosecurity really matter? Any diseases that get into the tank are going to get killed off by the medicine. And Unfortunately, it would be it would be great if this were true. It would make our jobs so much easier as hobbyists. Um, but if the medicine doesn't generally cure the disease. It's the tank transfers that really make sure that we're not introducing diseases into our aquariums. Uh, the medication will get rid of most of the disease, but it often doesn't affect the eggs or the dormant cysts in the aquarium. And so it's critical that you're doing the tank transfers into sterile environments to make sure that any of the remaining disease in the aquarium is eradicated. You get rid of that when you sterilize the tank and then the new sterile environment doesn't have any of that. So then when you hit it with a second round of medications, there's way less disease on the fish already. And then when you get rid of that, you're just diluting the amount of diseases until you reach a point where the fish doesn't have any, hopefully. We found that three tank transfers is probably the minimum that you should give to your fish. Some final notes on biosecurity. You also need to make sure that every single piece of equipment that you're using on your quarantine tank has been sterilized before you use it or has never come in contact or hasn't recently come in contact with your display tanks or any other aquariums that you have. 
Uh, the reason for this is that just how diseases can be transferred through these tiny aerosolized micro droplets in the air, they can be transferred through little bits of leftover water on a net or a pipette that you use to feed any piece of equipment, even your hands. That's why we sterilize our arms before and after they go into any of our tanks. Um, so make sure that your, your systems are in place. That's the biggest thing to making sure that you don't make a mistake is have your separated equipment or make sure that you know every time you touch something you're gonna rubbing alcohol your hands rubbing alcohol that piece of equipment before it goes into the tank if you're watching this video and you made it this far into it it means that you care deeply about the well-being of your animals and we commend you for that the culture around quarantine in the reef keeping hobby has changed dramatically over the past five and ten years five years ago i don't think that our shop would have been viable and uh, it's really, really cool to see how much that's changed and how quickly it's changing right now. And there's a way that you can help. So of course you can like this video and you can subscribe to our channel and that's great for the algorithm, but you can also share this video to someone that's new in the hobby that really needs this information and even some old hats in the hobby that could use a refresher on their quarantine knowledge. So thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. If you're purchasing quarantined animals for your aquariums, make sure you're doing your due diligence. All right, you can't trust anyone that says that they quarantine. If they're not up to date on the most recent procedures, if they're not doing their tank transfers, then there's a really good chance that you're gonna end up introducing disease to the tank anyway. Cause little guys like these cute yellowhead jawfish and that roll grama back there, they can last a long time in your aquarium if they're disease free. They're gonna be happy, healthy, they're gonna have better coloration. It's gonna be overall a much more enjoyable experience. It's well worth the effort.